Assemblyman Ken Blankenbush on the line right now. Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you, Bill? Well, there's all the money the governor spent in Syracuse on movies. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Yeah. This has nothing to do with the governor's money. No. It was the mayor of Little Falls that, that really went and, and, and lobbied to get this, uh, to get this movie filmed in, uh, in Little Falls, and, and it was. So it's pretty cool. Yeah, I guess. Were you a uh, well? Again, the cool part here is that it, yeah. it it did not include any of the governor's money. This was not the governor's no. push. This was just a mayor in Little Falls who tried to bring uh, business to his community uh, the yeah, organic yeah. way, I guess. Yeah, I guess so. Without without uh, without the governor's help. Uh, do, do, are you uh, happy with the results of the game last night? Are you a football fan? I, well, you know I. I grew up for the first 15 years of my life in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, mm. and I was an Eagles fan back in those days. And, uh, you know, I uh, I really uh, was for the Eagles uh, last night. Uh, I uh, I was da- or came down here to Albany, and I was watching the game with a few, with a few of our members, and uh, it seems like uh, there was a lot of Eagles fans <laughs> yeah, down here. Yeah, yeah. And, well, maybe uh, we're... you know, I got to I, I got to hand it to that back, you know, the backup quarterback. Yeah. Uh, who came in and uh, did a great job during the playoffs and everything else. So I, I was for the Eagles, uh, you know, watching the news this morning. You no, know, I, I, I don't get uh, the fans tipping over cars and breaking windows. I, I just don't get that part of uh, how about how about they broke it? They broke into a Macy's, broke yeah. the broke the windows on a display at Macy's. And put on the clothing that was on the mannequins. Um, yeah, I don't get it. I don't. I don't get it either. I mean, yeah. I think you know. You know, when you win, the, when you win the World Series, the Super Bowl, or any of this, it should be a happy time. Yeah, you shouldn't. Yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't be uh, breaking things. But yeah. Anyway, I don't get it either. But, I just don't get yeah. it. But uh, all right, Assemblyman, the governor's yeah. proposed budget. What are your thoughts? Well, first of all, uh, I'm sort of curious to see what's going to come out on his thirty-day amendments. That's that's what comes next. Uh, but I don't like the governor's budget. I, I don't think that's a surprise to most people who know me. Uh, I'm the ranking member on agriculture, and uh, you look at the agriculture budget this year, he cut $11 million out of the ag and markets budget. Uh, and, you know, in my district and a lot of districts, agriculture is one of the number one uh, industries in, the, yeah. in, in my district anyway. Mm-hmm. And uh, cutting that out, I, I, I wasn't happy with that. I, there's a lot of things. Uh, sometime we're we're going to have to straighten out the formula for our school districts. Yeah, uh, I was down at uh, Madison Oneida Herkimer uh, at Bosey's in New Hartford, the, you know, last week or mm-hmm. maybe two weeks ago. Yeah. Now, the the bottom line is of the thirty two. Uh, of there was 32 school districts rec- uh, represented there. 30 school districts uh, don't fall under that false ratio that they put in for these the uh, for help for our lower income yeah, yeah. school districts. Th- that's that's got to straighten mm-hmm. out. And when you look at that budget, uh, uh, you know uh, the, the problem is with this foundation aid and the capital improvements. It's it's a it's really hurts our upstate. Uh, uh, school districts right, or rural right. school districts. The the other thing too is, if you've noticed during his his uh, budget talk, he pointed the finger at the federal government and he said, you know, and even in his budget presentation, he admitted there a couple times that we are a high taxed, overspent state. Yeah, and yet he's <clears throat> blaming the feds. For this tax, uh, the, the you know the uh, new tax reform act, and saying that uh, I, I I would love this. We, the governor is going to sue the federal government because we're because we are an overtaxed yeah, over, yeah. Uh, and and we're going to blame somebody else for that. I you know you got to take a look at yourself. We're it's self inflicting what we're doing, but in the governor's re, in the governor's budget. You would see what he calls revenue raisers. Revenue raisers. He uses that term. That's that's taxes. What he's talking about. And I worry about the fourteen percent increase of the tax on health insurance underwriters that he's proposing in that budget. Right. What that means is. So what's going to happen? Is that cost going to be 
going to be passed down to our uh, policyholders? Mm-hmm. Is the premiums going to go up? The other thing, if you look, he's going to uh, he's proposing to tax a ten percent tax on any of the corporations that are receiving the tax breaks that the feds are giving us. So, in other words, we're going to we're, they're lowering the the federal tax from thirty five percent down to twenty one, and now the governor is saying, well, we're going to tax ten percent of that savings. We're losing businesses in the state of New York. How do you how do you make up though? I mean, the bottom line is, if uh, if it does mean less money coming from the federal government, how do I mean, how does the state make up for that? Well, it might. And, here, and, think, and you're going to say cut. You're going to say cut. So my question would you be would be to you is that's easy to say. I mean, you know better than anybody because you're down there in the middle of this. Yeah. yeah when it yeah. comes to cutting and and you know that there are cuts that have to be made. The problem you run into is no. nobody wants, you know, you can cut their stuff, but don't cut yeah. mine. That's the well, problem we're in here. We're dependent upon this and, stuff. And here's, and right now, between now and April 1st, when the budget is due, I have meetings in my office, and I'll tell you, everyone that comes in my office that pleads their case for extra money into the budgets, Almost all of them have a good story to tell. Right, right. I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying that they're not worth any. I mean, there's, it's amazing to sit in my office and they tell them about the programs that are there and what the budget cuts are going to do to them. So you're right. How in the world do you sit down in a yeah. system now where all of this is, uh, you know, coming out and, and we, we created the system. Yeah. So we have become. Stop? You're right. How do you? Right. We, I, I I equate it to the Kerplunk game. If you remember, the right. the cylinder, and you put all the sticks in there, and the marbles are on top, and you pull out a stick, and it's like, how do you? We have become this well, this spider web of uh, of hmm. benefits and and expenditures well, that it, it's hard to get rid of. Well, here's here's the here's the question I have had. Uh, if you look at our Medicaid spending, we spend more on Medicaid. Than Texas and Florida added together. Yeah. If you add them together, now why do we do that? And and every year they say that we have every year there's a report of fifty two million dollars of fraud in the Medicaid system. Well, if we know there's fifty two million dollars of fraud in the Medicaid system, why can't we fix it? But why you know we've got to take a look at why we spend so much yeah, money on yeah. that and. It, the Medicaid, listen, it's there for people that need it. I sure. understand that. But what's going on if Florida and Texas, you know, we we spend more money than those two states added yeah, together. Yeah. There's something going on there. So can we save some money by lo- taking a look and revamping that system without hurting the people that sure. really need it? Yep. Uh, well, it's corruption, right? I mean, you want to get rid of that corruption, you can certainly save a lot of money. Certainly not an easy uh, chore you're up against here. And over the next couple of weeks, several weeks, you guys yeah. are going to be very busy trying to whittle this thing away and, yeah. and, and come up with something. So, uh, And just want to, you know, the other thing, too, in every one of these budgets since I've been down here, you always see these buckets of money that the governor keeps in, in the negotiations. And all of a sudden, he's coming out with, uh, with some money, you know, we we ought to take a look at those buckets of money yeah. and where we're spending them, and uh, and help reduce our spending. And you know, we give a we give a lot of money to uh, the Hollywood, uh, uh, you know, the Hollywood film mm-hmm. industry for New York City. Right. I, I mean, so you know, there's a lot of expenditures that I think you look at this budget on that we could a lot reduce. of places to okay all right we should give the governor a, a board game he wouldn't uh, need to play hunger games <laughs> the hunger games that he loves to play and oh he always does and he hand out one the money county yeah. against another county yep one area of the state against the other i mean it, this is crazy uh settlement right. ken blankenbush we certainly appreciate your time and uh, want to do right. this again uh we yeah and, well we'll see what the real budget looks like and maybe we could talk again all right and uh, congratulations on last night's win